Good evening, good evening here. And I'm gonna move this screen so when I'm drawing. Okay, <gasps> there I am. Hi guys. Hi Jackie, hi Randy, hi Jan, hi Robbie. I thought you said five o'clock originally. Anyway, I'm so sorry. Yeah, it's five o'clock, uh, of course. Uh, hi Yvonne, thank you for that lovely message this morning. Um, yes, it was five o'clock. I just get into a habit of being 5.30 and um, I set up the time wrong, but now I went in and deleted it. I hope I deleted it. There'll be like five people who show up there and mad at me, but that's the way it goes when you're a one man band. Um, okay, uh, hi Becky, hi Lynn, hi Annette, Mary Ann, Darlene, Carol, Maureen, Felicia, Heidi. Wow, wow. Wow. Um, hi, 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 hi. Welcome. It is Wednesday. We have two minutes before we start. And I have like I have a super special guest, which I'm really excited about. And I'm going to tell you how I have not met her in person, but we live not too far from one another and how I made this connection and how I'm glad if you don't ask, the answer is no, and I just asked her for the heck of it, would you come on with us? And I couldn't stop talking to her this afternoon. So, um, hi, Mary Ann. So excited. Yes. By the way, I got a giveaway tonight, which I haven't really, haven't really thought about yet, but it's going to happen. Um, yes. Good evening, Bonnie. Hi, everybody. I love that you guys come back. Hi, Cindy. Oh, my goodness. Um, and I'll just calm down. I made a nice hot cup of tea. I don't know what's on the other side of this glass, but I normally hold it this way. Um, yes, I had a special guest this morning that I talked to. Look at my little rabbits. Um, I had a special guest this morning, and I have one today. Weird that I had them both on the same day, but it actually ended up working well. And then in between, I got all my palm trees cut, and I didn't physically climb up the trees uh, and cut them. Um, I had somebody professionally do it. Um, loved your interview this morning. Ginger was awesome. You kind of know when you connect with somebody, it's just a really wonderful feeling. Well, I've had that twice today. So, um, really lucky, really lucky. Hmm. Okay. That tea was really hot. I think I took the first layer of skin off. Um, uh, Lenore said giveaways. Yes. I love those. Uh, I'll give you a hint. It's the journals I used last week. And because I am not, well, I'm going to do something in this again just because um, I didn't prep anything else, <laughs> to be honest. Okay, it is 5 o'clock. So it is 5 o'clock somewhere. I don't know what you're drinking. I am having a cup of tea. And hi, Debbie. I love to bake. It's fun for me. Oh, that's really good. I'm glad that that connection is being made for so many. Um, I love it when I can collaborate with fellow artists and fellow um, people and do good both ways. You know, it really is great when you have that connection. Good people with good messages to hear. Oh, thank you, Jan. All right. It's 5 o'clock, which I'm normally on at 5.30, so I messed it up. But... Um, April, I am glad you're here, sister. So I am going to tell you, I met Annette Tello. No, I didn't meet her. She messaged me uh, a few months back, probably back in March or April, because I was on our local news, which is such an honor. Such an honor. I was featured um, in a news segment, which I should probably find that video and replay that somewhere, which I probably could. Um, really wonderful opportunity happened at the beginning or so of COVID and the, con the news station contacted me. They couldn't come here, but they featured my artwork and featured how art is a therapy, especially in these times or a type of therapy. And, um, so probably maybe 20 minutes after the interview, I was, um, Annette contacted me who wrote this book. It's called Pre Creative prescriptions. So she contacted me and said, how did I get on the news? She was local to me and had written a book and thought I might find it interesting. We started talking. I had nothing to say about how I got on the news because they contacted me. Um, but I immediately looked up her book and within five minutes um, had ordered it. 
Um, I ha I'm going to be truthful. I haven't read the whole thing. Um, but it's a workbook of sorts. So um, you know me with my art. But I will show you that the first... Da, 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 da. I don't know. The first... Okay, even in the introduction. Okay, even in the introduction, I was like highlighting. When I read things, I highlight them. I underline them. I was on the treadmill journal... Journaling is a vehicle for recording and integrating your experiences. So long story short, um, I ordered the book. So happy I did. And um, I'm going to bring, I think I'm going to, yep, there she is. I'm going to bring Annette into camera and unmute her. There she is. There she is. Hi. So Annette, go ahead and just uh, talk so I know we can hear you and whatnot. Can you hear me? I can. Can you guys hear Annette just to make sure we have a really good connection and we're good? Go ahead and um, introduce yourself, Annette. How about that? Hi, my name's Annette. Thank you for having me on today. I'm really honored to be on your program. And basically, I've done a lot of things, um, but I am basically a rehabilitation counselor. So I've worked with many people who have had... Um, their lives turned upside down due to either an accident or illness. And in the last six years, I work mostly with um, women with cancer. And I'm also a health coach, a life coach, and um, an artist, which is very important. <laughs> yes, and I do want to say, I mean, we're going to talk about this book. Um, and I have recommended this to several people. And you can order it off of Amazon, which being the wonderful interview person I am, uh, I didn't go in and get the link, but I will find it, and I will give that link, and you can always, uh, but, but it's called Creative Prescriptions for Women with Cancer. I do want to say this. I read the book, and um, I don't necessarily feel like it is only suited for those who have cancer, so can you speak about that? Yes, um, we were talking earlier, and a lot of people who have read the book that don't have cancer said that most of what's in my book can apply to anyone. So basically, this book is a creative first aid kit, and it I took what a lot of the struggles that women had when they had cancer, and this can be applied to any life challenge or serious illness, and I broke it down into really simple uh, information on how to handle this, and then a creative activity. So the nice thing about the book is that you don't have to read it from cover to cover. You just go to what you need that day. So if you're feeling anxious, you just go to the area that says when you're feeling anxious and you read about anxiety and how you can manage it. And then there's a creative pro project. Um, when, you, when, you, when you're lacking self-compassion, um, when you, need, um, uh, when you want, need to make yourself a priority, which I think is really important for women. And so it's basically the activities are basically divided into, you know, expressing yourself. So it's emotional healing, um, mindset and spiritual healing. So I really feel that when yeah, I love this I, and I'm just going to show. Um, so a lot of them is like I love this because she's wearing like a cape, which I think mm -hmm. is amazing. Um, a lot of it is a workbook style book. Yes. Yes. So that, and I love, how do I feel about my body? I mean, oh my goodness. And I love it, um, Annette, we we spoke earlier, which mm -hmm. I actually didn't want to get off the phone and felt like it was a great counseling session for me because one of the <laughs> things we did talk about was, I'll yes, <laughs> yes, I am divorced. And my second divorce, and I will say it without cringing, uh, left me in a state of affairs that I feel like a book like this, but also my art is what got me through that time. And we talked about um, your situation as well. Um, and I just want to say that something that Annette and I had connected on too was you don't need a room full of supplies. Right. So tell us about that and really in conjunction with this book. Well, I really feel um, there was a study done at the University of Illinois, which is my alma mater, that says that the, the, the less amount of art materials you have, the more creative you can get, which I totally agree with. So I don't want people to feel that they have to buy expensive supplies in order to be creative. Use what you have on hand or raid your children's art supplies, you know, because a lot of kids have really nice supplies, and I've raided my daughters many times. So, um, yeah, I, I, I don't want 
people to be intimidated because this book is not about creating beautiful art. The book is about the creative process. And what's healing is going through the creative process. And it's not making something that's a product when you're done with. So it's process, not product. So I don't want people to feel or say, oh, I'm not that creative. So this is not going to benefit me. The opposite is true. Yeah. So true. And that's one thing I'd say, that's where we connect really on too, is our art journals. I try to tell people, find an art journal that fits in your purse, fits in a bag. I carry all of my art supplies um, in um, just this bag. Um, yes, I'm blessed by an amazing art studio. But I tell people all the time, you don't need all of that stuff. You don't need stuff. You need to clear your brain. You need to be showing up and you need to be present when you're in that book and not looking for something that's buried in some drawer somewhere. <laughs> well, what this book is designed that you can do the whole book with, with um, color pencils. So I, 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 at first I had more painting and other mediums, but I realized, you know, someone's not feeling good and this is meant to be done at your home or meant to take if you're in, um, chemotherapy and going through infusions or you're um, sitting in the waiting room for radiation I want people they could throw this in their purse and just have you know tw 12 to 24 color pencils and that's all they need to do this book so and I'm, I'm gonna read just some of the comments so you know um, and you can go back in and you know respond to these if you'd like but after uh, Ruth said after your interview with Tracy after your interview I purchased your book for my dear friend who's having a rough time with her cancer diagnosis. She loves your book. She's been working through the exercises. Oh, thank you. Thank so you. I recommended this book to a friend of mine named April Anderson, who happens to be here. And she just said, this book is amazing. It has helped me in so many ways and Tracy's journaling. Thank you. Thank you, April. Thank um, you. I love that. I love when you can make a connection. And I'm not going to hold it against you that you went to University of Illinois because I went to Michigan State. So we <laughs> rivals. <laughs> so I'm not going to hold that against you. I didn't know it. I'm not sure if I would have plugged the book. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> okay. Would you tell us about your background and what you have to offer? Because um, unlike myself, I'm going to make up initials that go after my name, uh, but she has M period S after her name. <laughs> well, it's, it means a master of science in rehabilitation counseling. So um, would you like me to talk about how the book came about? Please, please, please. Okay. So, so basically the book came about because um, I've been, I have been working with cancer patients um, counseling and coaching for, um, and case management for four years. And I realized that, you know, even though a person got, had really good medical, a medical team, that there, there's still a lot of support that they needed. And I understood from my own personal experience. And we talked about this, that when, when I was a teenager, and again, when I, I was diagnosed with cancer in my thirties, that my art and my creativity were a big factor in my healing process. And so um, I did have a few of my clients that did go to art therapy that were offered in the hospitals here in San Diego. But most, most of my clients who wanted to, to do that kind of, um, you know, participate in that couldn't because either it was too far away or they weren't feeling good or maybe they had small kids. So it just it, it, it wasn't really an option for the majority of my clients. And so I, I wrote this book so the, a person could have like a mini, you know, therapy session whenever they needed it and they could do it in the comfort of their own home or they could do it in the doctor's waiting room because I really feel that the creative process is a, an important tool that can go across not only physically healing because I really feel that um, when, when we create it puts us in the zone a creative zone or in the flow and that heals us physically but it also offers emotional psychological and spiritual healing yeah. and I think this is the one medium that really covers a lot of areas. And I think it's a really untapped source that a lot of women don't know about. So I really, you know, with we have that in common where we want women to know, hey, this is a great source that's easy, it's not expensive, you can do it in your own home. And it, there's so many benefits. And throughout my book, <clears throat> I cite research that's done that proves everything that um, that's in here on how, you know, 
um, the art journaling can reduce depression, it can reduce anxiety, it can uh, help um, help the healing process, it can help us feel less alone. I mean, there's so, there's so many benefits to, especially like in your community, oh. when when we can share something across the table. And this is what our one of the benefits of our therapy, like you're creating something and you're across the table from someone who's going through the same thing that you are. You don't feel so alone. You have you have a community, and that's another aspect of creativity, the, the creative process. Uh, so there's so many benefits, and I want people to understand that um, it's it's at their fingers. Anyone could do this. I love that. I absolutely love it, and I. I say this time and time again, so, I, and, um, you know, death, I just experienced a very close friend of mine passing away, um, also being divorced and having my life unfold on, you know, it, it could be any of these things, death, sickness, um, divorce, That's anything that is definitely. life altering, I almost want to yeah. say it's like a shift and you're not even, when it happens, it's not, you're like, Oh, I'm trying to find the old you. Well, there is no old you. It's now the new you. And that is one thing that I discovered through my art journaling after I had kind of disappeared for a couple of years. And mm -hmm. I was rebuilding, first off, my life, my family, my home, financial, this, this, this. But in the process, I picked up my art journal. And I don't, I'm, I go to counseling. I went to counseling. Um, mm -hmm. And I highly recommend that too. Um, but I was able to reconnect with myself in like 15 minutes of time in the morning. And that's yes. what started. And then I started to share. And just like you said, this community, your tribe, your vibe attracts your tribe. All of a sudden, it just blossomed, and it was almost like I found my new self in the process. Now, I can't wait to see who I'm going to be next year, but this, I'm really good with this person. <laughs> yes. I think yeah. that's a beautiful story. So I, th I think that people, you know, it offers us so much more that, than we're even, you know, aware of. And, um, you know, the important thing is to do is in, in this process is just to trust yourself and, and the I think I really, in this book, I reiterate a lot that we use our emotions as fuel. So <laughs> if you're feeling stressed, if you're feeling anxious, if you're feeling depressed, if you're feeling happy, use that energy as fuel to um, take you through the creative process. And, and, and that's one way it can be very healing because it's a very safe way to process our emotions or to express our emotions. And Instead of stuffing them down and denying. Yes. Which is and, so or having the bad feelings be your fuel, where you're showing up yeah. in a space that is kind of working counterintuitive to what's going on. Um, I always well, say... Kids have those bad feelings and, and, and channel them on the paper. You know, art is a great way. Yeah. I've seen some amazing work for people who are angry <laughs> and they're just kind of letting it hang out. And, now, see, you know, I found a baseball bat in a garbage can. Super effective. <laughs> but okay. <laughs> All right. A pencil and paper. <laughs> but, when, but when you see artwork that's done by someone who is angry or has a very emotional, it's powerful. It, just like and, love songs or songs yeah. of cheating and hate. It's, I, I yeah. have always said you create in the best, like in the best spaces of your life and the worst spaces of your life. And I do want to share this because I kept opening the book and it was, um, I love this picture and it says what I love about myself right here. Mm -hmm. And I love that because the one thing about women that I find and I, I will say mostly I work a lot with women or, and, and share Same with here. a lot of women, um, but I'm sure there's men out there too. We don't give ourselves enough grace. Like yes. we literally are around being compassionate to every single person around us. And I don't think it was until, I mean, post-divorce, counseling, whatever, that I sat down and said to myself, you know, I kind of forgive me. I did the best with what I knew at the time. Yeah, mm -hmm. I kind of fell for, you know, somebody who presented this way or the other or what have you. But at the end of the day, especially like when it comes to art, because I'm sure you've heard it where people go, well, I can't draw a stick figure. Right. Well, right. who really wants to draw one? So I love that you said like this book, and I say it all the time, 
use that book as like a diary that you had when you were 15 and you locked it and there was a little key and you mm -hmm. hid it in your underwear drawer thinking your mom would never find it. Um, <laughs> um, give yourself grace and just be good yeah. to yourself. And instead, instead of just knocking yourself down, you would never do that to your best friend. Why are you doing it to yourself? Well, you know, I have a whole section in the book about, um, it's called When You Lack Self-Compassion. And it's I, I saw that again and again and again, with, especially with women with cancer. They became angry with themselves because, you know, they were some, a lot of single moms. They were the breadwinners. They did everything. They were super moms. And then all of a sudden, you know, they, they can't, they need someone to drive them to an appointment. And they're really hard on themselves. And so self-compassion regardless of what you're going through is really the, the, the foundation to self care. Because when, when you can acknowledge that you're hurting and be, be compassionate with yourself, then you can open yourself up to ways of helping you to feel better. So when you don't have compassion with yourself, you don't take good care of yourself because you're pushing that away or you're angry at yourself. So self compassion is the key to self care and self-love. Oh my God. That's really important. I will not cry, she says. I will not cry. I, I turned 50 and all of a sudden it's like, oh, you want me to cry right here, right now? Sure, I got it. <laughs> so I want to read some of the comments. And if you guys do have questions, yes, please, please, please ask them. She will be here till about 5.30. But it, we've already talked um, about my membership and what we could do. And then we will talk about how you can further connect with Annette before we're done. But um, Loretta said, so hard to be as kind to ourselves as we are to others. Mm -hmm. And that's, it's so powerful. Everybody's saying this is so powerful. Um, Ruth said, I can only write poetry when I'm deeply hurt. Wow. That's amazing. That's another creative tool. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be with a pencil. We're talking about it could be music. It could be poetry. It could be whatever works for you. Everybody's different. You need to find what works for you. You're literally not on board with my baseball bat beat in a garbage can. I cannot understand why you're not jumping on board. It should be a whole chapter. <laughs> Believe me, I did it in my 20s. I kind of, so I've been there. I've done that. So luckily I found other tools. It only happened <laughs> once. And I remember when said person came home, he was like, something happened to the garbage can. I'm like, I know. I saw that. I have no idea how that happened as I, as I the wooden that. bat is all shard up. Okay. No, not me. <laughs> um, Jamie said, I love that you wrote this book and are sharing on Tracy's page. I'm going to have to get the book. Um, art journaling and crafts have helped me through many losses and continue to help me as she lives with chronic illnesses for over 20 years. So, yeah. oh my goodness, that is something so many people don't. I have a good friend whose spinal cord got um, a, a, a something in it and it has altered her life forever from being a personal trainer. So I think so many wow. times that chronic illness is overlooked. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. I'm loving this. You guys, um, everybody is saying thank you so much for the information and that this is very therapeutic. Creativity is healing and so important at times. And people are asking about the book and yes, you can purchase the book on Amazon. Is that where you recommend Annette? Um, Amazon and Balboa Press, which is a publisher, you can purchase it on there. And I know um, Target.com had it, so you can purchase it on, online at Target. Okay. And I, I think Walmart, too. Yeah, yeah I and Walmart. I will make sure, I put this already on, like, my blog and stuff, but I'll make sure and throw a link up there when I'm done. And um, mm -hmm. people just said ordering the book. Thank you for sharing. I love that. Okay, so, and, and I do want to say, because... I got like a free mini session with Annette. <laughs> she started asking me questions and I'm like, hold on, can I get some tissues and lay on a couch? Because that would be so much more comfortable. Um, and I do advocate for women too. I think especially, I think COVID, not, not just women, I should say men too. Um, mm -hmm. COVID is really, um, I think for some people, especially if you are high risk, you are now kind of locked in. So how did COVID change for you, your business, and how you see people? Like, can you see people? For me? Yes. Well, you know, 
Um, my my coaching business, I, I work with people across the country. So I, I work, you know, I work from home since I've written the book. So it didn't change a lot. Um, luckily, I'm still able to do what I, um, what I do because in, in San Diego, I could see clients, you know, in person. But now at this point, I do everybody online. So it's easy to do a one-on-one on Zoom or a FaceTime if I when I work with clients. So it didn't change it that much for me. Yeah. How do you connect or how do people connect with you? Uh, Facebook, social media, email, homing pigeon. What do you recommend? Um, on my website, if someone wants to talk to me, they can. I do free 50-minute um, consultation or we can just talk on the phone. So if there's something that you just want someone to talk to, neutral, they can actually offer you some, some tips or help you come up with some great tips. It's complimentary. So any of your um, followers are welcome to do that. There's no obligation. And this is my way of being of service. So um, I am I just talked to somebody yesterday who had cancer and is going through a hard time. So I'm, you know, available to for your um, for your followers because I think. Um, and name and your website. This, name your what uh, website is. AnnetteTello.com. Great. I'm going to just type it in so that yeah. they have it. You can also follow me on Facebook under Annette Tello, and I also have cr- created prescriptions on Facebook. Great. And That's it- awesome. Oh, and people are saying COVID. Lo- <laughs> okay. What? Somebody is on board with my um, baseball bat idea. Thank you very much <laughs> for the support. Um, <laughs> the Louisiana Slugger, the Louisville Slugger uh, to both headlights. Mm, thank you. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I think that's a, isn't that a, uh, what is Carrie Underwood song? Um, yeah, Randy well, said COVID lost. And then swing it. <laughs> COVID loss of my job and pending divorce. Wouldn't be able to get through. Think about all. You know what? It without art. Um, I I feel like sometimes too life just manages to pile up in the smallest ways. Like it doesn't have to be even something traumatic. It could be wake waking up one day and realizing I'm just not, I don't have my get up and go. I don't. Yes. Yes. So that's the, the times it's for stress. It's definitely good for stress because what the research states is that because it puts you in this creative flow where you're completely present, creativity has the same benefits as meditating. And so for those people, you know, everybody says, Oh, if you're stressed out, meditate. A lot of people can't meditate. A lot of my clients, you know, trying and they couldn't do it. This is the next best thing because yep. it can put you in that kind of state. Yeah. Now I or which is very healing. I organize things. So when I'm stressed out, I tell people to go clean a closet. <laughs> I I do that too. I can do that too. So it depends, you know, you know, and that can be creative too, right? When yes. You kind of figure out where things go. So it's visually creative, definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, somebody just said depression limits your get up and go. Ugh. yes, mm-hmm. it really does. Yes. And I am I am one of those people. I always say it. I kind of wear every expression I have if it's possible. Mm-hmm. It's like you kind of know, like I'm super silent. I mean, I don't walk around with a baseball bat, but everybody, too, who's I'm joking about the baseball bat. So I don't want anybody emailing me and I don't want to hear about any revenge on a garbage can. It was an isolated incident, and it was my garbage can and my baseball bat. And you <laughs> anybody else? Anybody else? It's just, yeah. Yeah. Um, and somebody just said painting is my way to relax. Absolutely. I uh, I cannot thank you more. Um, the other other thing I want to mention about this book, which I really loved, and you said it, is every every chapter is like broken down so if you're needing manage your mindset express yourself make yourself a priority and it even breaks it down further when you don't mm-hmm. feel worthy when you need to say no oh my god i need to read yes. i need to read that one um that i love this book cuz it kind of like just i feel like there was a lot of things that I, I could look at it and go, oh, my God, yep, right there. This one really, um, really speaks to me, like the self-care retreat. I love that. Oh, please hold the book in front. Oh, there we go. Here is the book. 
Yeah, and the other section is uh, connecting to your body wisdom and cultivating a spiritual practice. And so just to let people know, you can just, these, these sections are small. If you have five minutes, you can read it, do the activity. So these were designed that they're short, they get to the point, and you can just do what you need that day. You don't have to read the whole book. Now, Annette, I know we talked on the phone this afternoon. Does that count as my 15 minutes of free? Um... <laughs> no. You can sign up on my website. I have a calendar. So you can just schedule yourself on the times that are available. So anybody can do that. I'm just making sure because if my name pops up every day at noon, are you going to be like, okay, Tracy, you have to knock this off? <laughs> well, we'll do a barter. So maybe I'll go on your membership and we can we can work something out yeah we'll talk. for my members for everybody who is part of your artful journey one thing that i was telling annette and she had brought it up is i feel like there is a personal development side too we added morning meditation we do something called wine with wine my wine with wine is w-i-n-e with wine um you don't have to drink wine but those are things that I added, and I'm always adding to our membership. But one thing initially that I had always thought was um, like personal development. So stay tuned on that because um, it was really Annette who brought that up, and I loved the idea. And so, um, yeah. Oh, and somebody just said I'm hysterical. Again, <laughs> kidding about the baseball bat. <laughs> I think Annette, Annette, I think we live about 40 minutes from me. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. So yeah. Um, I do want to thank you um, really for today and just agreeing to go on and do this with somebody you don't know. And um, I hope, uh, you know, obviously uh, I'd love it if people order your book. It's not a requirement, but it's something that I read, I got, and I recommend it. And I'm only, I say it time and time again, I get sent a lot of stuff. I ordered this book myself. I didn't ask Annette to send it to me. And mm -hmm. I contacted her. It was all me bugging her and saying, let's put you on for the 14th. And I don't really recommend, I never recommend something I don't use, love, or promote. But um, you and I have a lot. Uh, I, I'm almost a little bummed because, I mean, I don't work with cancer patients and I'm not a counselor. Uh, but I looked at it and went, I could have wrote this. I could have wrote this. This is what I want to say. <laughs> that's that's true yeah you can write a version of that because, well you know, you know mine is for cancer patients but there's you can write one for people going who have gone through divorce oh boy that baseball yeah. bat will be chapter one <laughs> <laughs> yes you can do it i'll help you <laughs> and everybody is saying thank you for sharing and thank you. Um, and I've got, Marianne just said, yeah. I will be sharing thank this you for information having. with many blessings. Oh, my God. That's so good. Okay, thank Annette, so I'm going to hang up from you. And just please, if you see my name on your calendar, and it might be like a pseudo name. Like I'll be Sam Hill the next day. <laughs> <laughs> please do. And please do make an appointment because I love talking to you. Yeah, and I just so you guys know, because I had a few people who popped in late, I will take I will be taking this video. I'm staying on for the next half hour or so to draw and do a giveaway, but I will be um, um, I will be taking the interview portion of this and uploading it to YouTube, and then I will take the drawing portion so that uh, you can share that with your friends and they don't have to see me draw. Annette, thank you so much for agreeing. Thank you too. It was, a, it was a joy. Thank you. All right. I'm going to disconnect with you, but we'll talk soon. Thank yes. you. Take care. Bye-bye.